Hi there, it's Jeanette. Thanks so much for joining me. Today's card features this really sweet scene that I created using Mama Elephant's Picnic with Friends stamp and die sets. Um, it was so much fun to create this scene and I think this set lends itself to so many different kinds of cards for different occasions. So let's get right into it and I'm going to share with you how I created the card. So I have my Misty here and a piece of Nina cardstock. I like to keep all my scraps so that I don't waste any. And I'm just positioning all my stamps, the image stamps, um, on the paper, leaving enough room so that when I go to die cut them with the dies, there's enough space so that I can sort of die cut all of them at the same time. And I pretty much used, uh, I think, all the image stamps in the set. And now I'm inking it up with some Memento Tuxedo Black ink. This is the same ink that I always use, just a smaller format. And I did ink it up two times to get a very nice dark impression. That's why I like to use the Misty. And then I'll just clean up the stamps with my Lawn Fawn Chamois um, before moving on. So I'm going to list all the marker colors here. Um, this is different from what I usually do, so let me know if you prefer this or when they're scrolling across the screen. Um, I will also list them at the end of the video too, so it's easier to find. So I had originally thought this was going to be my lightest tone, the one that I started with, but I soon realized it was going to be too dark, so I did switch it up and pull out this lighter marker. Um, and then so when I continued coloring the fox, I started with this marker first and um, I really like this combo for the fox. Um, I always have a harder time um, like when I'm doing critters to get like the right color for like little foxes and I think this is a combo that I'm going to be using from now on. I really like it. So I'm just doing one little fox at a time and um, being sparing with the dark marker because I don't want any bleeding um, and I don't want to um, make it more difficult to blend. Now I am a little bit out of screen here. I apologize for that. Um, I try to zoom in on my coloration because I know you guys like that, but sometimes I move the paper <laughs> out of screen and I don't realize it. So now I've moved it back for you so you can see. I'm going to take the colorless blender now and just you know, push any stray ink away. And now to make it blend a little easier, I'm just picking up some of the darker marker with the mid marker here. And that just really helps to blend the color um, a little bit easier. So that's a little trick for you. I decided to do the rest of the fox with a sort of lighter, um, sort of almost a skin tone, reddish skin tone to sort of match the rest of the fox. So I added that in and then used a paler marker. And then I did go in with a little bit of gray um, just to tone down the pink a little bit and make it look a little bit more um, like a shadow. So once that was done, I moved down to or moved over to the next fox. Um, this one was a little bit more tricky to figure out how to color. Um, he's sort of in profile but it was a little tricky, but this is where I'm laying down the shadows. Um, and I think it, it worked pretty nicely. I kind of liked how it turned out in the end. These um, stamps are so cute. I just can't get over how sweet they are. There is another set. I can't remember what it's called, but it sort of features like a mama bunny with her little baby. Um, and like a parasol and a table. So I think that I will be you know, creating a lot of scene cards with these two sets, sort of mixing and matching the different images together. So you can see now that the coloration is almost done. Again, it was a little harder to blend these colors together, so I'm picking up some of that darker marker with the tip of the other one to blend it easier. Then I'll do the tail and the face the same way as I did the other fox and add a little bit of gray. And then the colorless blender just to remove any stray ink. So now we're gonna do the cute little bunnies here. I kept the color 
um, that I was adding really just to the edges of the face. I really tried not to add too much color, just went around the edges of everything. I really wanted the bunnies to read as like white um, and not like gray. So I was very careful with how much marker I laid down. And you can see I'm blending very, very um, carefully around the edges, leaving a whole lot of that bunny white. And then I'll take the colorless blender and complete blending everything out. I added the same um, markers that I used for the fox. I used that to the ears of the bunny. This isn't usually the, the colors I use, but I kind of liked how it sort of matched the other animals. And the completed card looks really nice because I didn't use a whole bunch of different tones. So that's sort of a trick, like try to keep the same tones or the same markers you're using. Try to transfer them to the other areas as well. I'm going to color up the apples really carefully with some nice sort of R3537 sort of it's a little bit more of a rosy red then I just colored the checks here just alternating colored those all in and then I added some gray around the edges just to give a little bit of shadow and dimension I did end up stamping this a couple more times because it was sort of blurry so that's why you see it on another piece of paper and then just the teacups and the teapot I did them in blue didn't use too many marker colors for this because I didn't um, I didn't want to get any bleeding of the colors I decided to add a little bit of yellow there and that really makes the blue pop and I'm going to do the rest of the cups and the plate in the same blues <clears throat> I do try to limit how many colors I am putting onto my card. There's already quite a few on this card, so I try to keep the same um, markers um, and color multiple elements the same, so it sort of keeps the card from looking too busy. I am going to now do the cupcakes and just do a little brown here. Um, it's actually sort of yellow red that I'm using but it sort of reads as cupcake color to me and I'll do the icing in some of the pink so just the same pinks I was using for the uh, cheeks and the apples I'm using some of the same markers there I'll color this teacup those same colors now I'm going to just cut apart all the dies and I am going to now place them over the images and I'm going to adhere them down with some post-it tape and that keeps them from moving around or slipping when I'm running them under or through the Big Shot. I also have a magnetic plate that I keep underneath um, that's part of the platform and that sort of helps as well. So now I'm just going to remove all the images from the dies put the post-it tape aside. I like to sort of keep that and reuse it if I can. And I'll put all the dies away and just sort of place the images a little bit, get an idea. I sort of had an idea of how I wanted them on the card, but just sort of get an idea. And I did snap a picture um, before moving on. So now I have some dies. I have the Whimsy Shaker Maker die. I also have the Mama Elephant Landscape dies. Um, so I'm cutting those all out of Bristol um, Strathmore paper. Just measuring how much I have to trim off this one. And I am going to just make sure that everything sort of looks nice. And I will sponge the green onto the landscape pieces. So I'm starting with a lighter um, color. I'll list those at the bottom. I can't remember offhand which one this was. I think it's Twisted Citron, but it'll be listed at the bottom of the video. So I put that on and then I deepened up the green with some of this um, mowed lawn. And one of them was an oxide and one of them was a regular Distress ink and they sort of blend nicely together. There's not, I didn't find it was too hard to blend them. 
And once that was all done, I did take my Distress Sprayer and spritz them with some water and then just soak up the excess here with a paper towel. I am going to create a nice sort of sky for the background of my card. I'm using the My Favorite Things Cloud Stencil and a couple of colors of blue. And I like to start at the top and then just work my way down and sort of rotate the stencil so that it's never the same um, sort of cloud formation um, that I'm using so it makes it look more natural. And then I'll just soften up all of that. And I'll clean off my mat before moving on. I did spritz a little bit more water and distress the grass or the hills a little bit more. I'm making my card base here. And I'll go ahead and glue everything on. You can see that I had, when I had first tried to do the clouds, I had put too much ink on. So I just flipped the piece of cardstock over and started over again. I'm only going to be putting on one layer of this um, foam tape. Sometimes I add two layers, but I didn't want it to be too raised off the card. I just wanted a little bit of dimension, so I just added one layer of this. And this is the Simon Says Stamp Foam. I like it because it's a little bit more narrow and it fits nicely on the frames, but I really find it hard to get the adhesive off. So once I had put um, everything on, I realized that a little bit of the grass and the sky were poking through. So I was able to pull it off the card. I was really lucky and just trim that part off. Um, I was really lucky I could do that. And then I just put it back onto the card base. So now I'm putting the little figures on, sort of moving them so that they're sort of sitting on the lower hill. I have that fox sort of sitting on the frame, which I kind of I kind of like that that he's sort of on the frame, so it really does make the card look more um, multi-dimensional. And once I sort of had everything where I wanted it to be, I start to glue it down. I'm using the Tonic Nouveau glue, which is my favorite glue to use. I'm using my quick stick to pick things up. And I'm using these little tweezers to lay them down. These are my little tools that I love to use when I'm working with small elements. It just makes it so much easier um, to get everything exactly where you want them to be. And this glue is great because it sticks so well and the nozzle never clogs, which I love because I've had so many different products and I've bought so many different little nozzles and in the end they always end up clogging but this one never does so this is my favorite glue to use. And you can see how everything is coming together. And because I didn't raise that frame too far off the card, that little fox looks really great sitting on the frame like that. Just gonna add that last apple there. So this is when I realized that that was not like a piece of crockery, that it was actually another cupcake. So I went in with some colorless blender and was able to turn it into a cupcake. Now I'm using this little um, white pen to add some highlights, some little dots. This is the Uni Posca. Um, white marker I guess and it is phenomenal. I really love it. It has a really nice fine tip um, and so far it has been working beautifully. I prefer it to the Sharpie poster paints that I've been using in the past. So now I'm going to put the sentiment on so I'm lining it up on my Misty so that I can stamp it exactly where I want it to be and if I need to um, re-stamp it I can and not worry about messing up my card. So that's my card done. I really had so much fun creating it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it as well. So I'm going to be listing the marker colors I used again. 
um, right here. Tell me if this is what you prefer or you rather uh, that I do it the way I generally do. And I'm going to have all the supplies linked below this video on YouTube or my blog. Again, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.